Okay, here we have a 2000 Toyota Celica GTS 1.8 liter V VTLI motor. Um, doing a head job on it real quick. The motor, well, I wouldn't say real quick, but anyways, um, just making a little video. I figure it helps people out. <clears throat> I've done most of the work already. Um, I threw a couple of parts back on real quick just to give, you know, a little bit of information. But, um, anyways, it's got the 2ZZ GE motor. I figure I'll throw that out there. Alright, anyways, start right here. Like I said, the work's already been pretty much done. I'm just throwing it back together. Anyways, your throttle. You know how you got your intake like that. The throttle sits right there. Obviously, it's bolted on, but now it's not. But there's four studs. One, two, three, four. If you look here, the 12 millimeter. The holes will be... It's not really that hard. It's kind of easy. Um, get that main coolant line right there. That hooks into the head itself down there. I don't know how well the audio is. If you guys can hear me or not, but I'll revise it when I'm done. But anyways, I've already taken your coolant tank off. It obviously hooks there, it's one bolt, at least mine was. Um, so now the intake, I've already taken that off, but I just put it on real quick to show. Look down in there, between the gaps, you got bolt holes there, another one there, and there. There's a stud right there. And then underneath that intake, make sure you look underneath. Of course, the camera's not gonna show it. But there's going to be one underneath the intake, don't miss it. Alright, let's get this thing off. That's if it allows me. There we go. See, I've already stuffed rags down in there. Alright. Anyway, so... Now that that's off your fuel rail, Obviously, you unplug them. I've already done that. There's two bolts. One, two. Take those off. Which I, again, have already done. Fucking cat. Get out of here. I'm scratching my damn car. Anyways, um, pull that off. Trust me, it wasn't that easy in the beginning. They were kind of stuck in there, but that's it. You remove those two bolts and it comes right out. Push that out of the way. There's your fuel injectors. Always, at least I, always put the bolts back so you don't lose them whenever possible. If you can't put them back or you just don't feel like it, try labeling them. Put them on a paper towel or something and write on it. Anyways, so, obviously I took the valve cover off. The valve cover's over here. Make sure you take your tensioner out first before you do any of this because you gotta loosen up that timing chain. Tensioner's in the back down there. It's kind of a bitch to get to. Pull that out. Make sure your engine's at top dead center. Which I did. Um, once you do that, pull the camshafts out. I already did that. Camshafts are, I pulled all the caps off, the bearing caps. I put them all over here. I kept it organized. I took that sprocket off here. That way I could get the chain off. Because even with the tensioner off, it's still pretty tight. See, it's... But anyways, when you get your motor top to the center, I'll tell you this. Make sure you mark where your, your chain was. Exactly where your chain was. If you're off a tooth, it's going to suck. So do it on here, too. See? I marked right where the chain was, and in my case, when I had the motor at top dead center, I had both the sprockets pointing directly upwards. So you mark your sprocket, and the oh, and the link right there is where I was, anyways. On the chain, you mark that link as well. I might be able to show you on the chain. Yeah, right here. Oops. So that's done. Now. The biggest bitch of all this that I've experienced so far is back here. Let me grab my light real quick. It still fucking works. All right. Anyways, back here. Oops. Manifold. The exhaust manifold. 
fucking light sucks. Anyways, it's really, really tight. There's really no space back there. There's a couple bolts on. Uh, well, to get the heat shield off, there's two bolts on each side of the heat shield. I don't know what I did with it. I think I threw it in the trash. Yeah, see? There's two bolts, one on each side of the heat shield. I took this out in pieces with a cutting torch because the damn thing, you can't get it out any other way. So I did that. <clears throat> Anyways, once I got the heat shield out, there's a couple bolts. You're gonna have to really find them with your hands, but there really wasn't all that many. I think there was like, what? Take those two out, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. I can't give you the exact number because I'm just too lazy. <clears throat> but anyways, unbolt those. Now this is tricky because when you unbolt the, um, and make sure you get all the bolts out of that exhaust manifold. I really wish I could get a better view here. I just, I'm sure you guys know what an exhaust manifold is. Oh, this phone sucks. Yeah, that's the best view you guys are going to get, unfortunately. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, once you get the bolts out, <clears throat> there's going to be studs on it. So you're you're going to have to want to push that back. The manifold itself, you're going to want to push it back away from the head. Do not use a metal pry bar if you can avoid it, because if you gouge that head, it's going to suck. So, what I did, underneath the car, grab my handy light again. Anyways, go underneath the car. To your exhaust. Take a ratchet strap. Like that. Hook it to where the rubber hanger is and then to the back of the car. Hook the other side to the tow hook on the back of the car. And ratchet it pulling the exhaust backwards. God damn it, I got fucking cats everywhere. All right, anyways, that's... Now, you're not gonna be able to pull it very far at first because there's a bracket, and this I found out the hard way. I'm gonna crawl up underneath this car real quick. Hopefully, don't squish me on camera. If it does, then well, that's the way it is. Go underneath the car. Once you're underneath the car, this. There's a bracket right there that connects your head, or your header, I should say, exhaust header, to the frame of the car. You have to unbolt that right there, or cut it, whatever you gotta do. Sorry again about my poor camera quality, I'm not from Hollywood. But anyways, you look upwards, you can either take that one out, and that one to remove the bracket. But me, I just took that one out. That separates the um, exhaust header from the car itself. Once you take that bolt out, take your ratchet strap and tighten it, pulling back the exhaust. And when you do that, it'll pull the header pipe right, or the header off the back of the, off the back of the motor. So that's all done now. <clears throat> Sorry if you guys saw my underwear. It's all right, at least I'm wearing some. So, anyways. My idiot friend just tried to call me. Fuck him. Ugh, I'm gonna kill that cat. It's on my damn car, you know. It's fucking Tommaso. Anyways, so where we're at now, sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. When you do your head, look down inside here. Each one of these is gonna have a hole in it. These, by the way, are your lift bolts. I heard they are notorious for breaking. I don't know. I believe they are, but I have not taken them out. I'm not going to take them out. But if you ever have to take them out, may God be with you, because they do break. Anyways, right here there's gonna be, there's 10 head bolts all together. You gotta do them in order. I kinda painted a little bit, not very well, but I did my best. So, one, two, you know, some fucking cable. Come on. All right, I don't wanna break that. All right, so let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. You remember that order. You can get the diagram online. If you do not do it in that order, you're you might as well just throw your car away. So this right here is what the, the bolt head is. I fucking no. Um, M12 is what it says. Anyways, 
I'm not going to do this on camera right now because I'm by myself. And I can't, you know, hold the camera while doing this. When you loosen it, I'm telling you right now, when you loosen these head bolts, just loosen it until the bolt cracks just a little bit. And then you go to two. Do the same thing just till it cracks loose just a little bit. Then three. Then four. So on and so forth. Make multiple passes. And each time you make another pass, you loosen it a little more, a little more, you know, three, a little more, four, a little more, until you have them, you know, fully loose. That way you don't warp the head. Now, I'll make another video when I have this thing out. And um, when you tighten these back up, you tighten them in the order you took them out. One, two. But then again, that same thing. When you're tightening it back up, you snug them. Each one, just snug it a little bit until you complete the order then you get back to number one then you snug it a little bit more you make multiple passes do not tighten each do not tighten up a bolt all the way until you're all snugged up on all of them and then you you tighten them up to specs starting at one do the same thing for two and the specs that you're going to want remember this you're going to want it at 32 foot pounds when you get each bolt to 32 foot pounds you're going to want to tighten it up again 90 degrees and that's it do not do any more than that if you do more than that you'll ruin it so again 32 foot pounds you might want to use one of these handy guys i didn't pay much well, i don't know where my own tools are i didn't pay much for it right here you know what this is right it's not a sexual device yeah it's a torque wrench anyways I don't pay like 20 bucks for it. I don't prefer the click ones because I've heard bad reviews about those. These ones are kind of idiot proof. If you can read a gauge, you can do it right. So, anyways, use your torque wrench. You tighten each one of those up after you do multiple passes. Your final tightness, again, what I say? 32 foot pounds, 90 degrees after that. You, you, the way to tell to do that is to put a paint, once you get the bolt to 32 degrees, I mean 32 foot pounds, sorry. Once you tighten it to 32 foot-pounds, you're to put a paint mark on the bolt and a paint mark on the motor block itself, or the head, I should say. And then you turn the bolt 90 degrees, which is, you know, obviously a quarter of the way of a full turn, so 90 degrees, facing away from that paint mark. And that should be it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to have a few more. Oh, yeah, start another thing. You don't have to, but I would. When you get the intake off, the starter's fucking right there. I mean, it's so easy. Might as well just replace it. I mean, if you don't have to, you don't have to, but I'm going to because it's right there. It's easy, it's cheap, cheap insurance to know that, hey, you have a new starter. So, I'll make some more videos as I get the head out. Well, once I get the head out. All right.